And welcome wow. everybody to the PCS Like a Pro show. This is our 13th episode and I'm so excited today that we have Paulette here with us, a Coast Guard spouse that's going to talk with us about their experience PCSing and things they've learned along the way. But before we get into that, I just want to quickly remind everybody that if you've moved within the last 12 months to get online, um, back onto DPS and fill out your customer service satisfaction survey because that directly impacts how companies are awarded shipments um, in the future and how Transcom knows what your experience is. If you are having trouble logging into DPS, we've seen some of that floating around, contact the DPS help desk. We'll get the number for that dropped in the comments for you uh, in the email address too, but definitely contact the help desk because they do a wonderful job at helping to walk through whatever issue it is that you're seeing on your screen. We've had to call them before and all I could tell them is like, my screen looks like this and they told me exactly what to do and I was in. So they are phenomenal people at being able to help with that. So just a few reminders on there. If you are awaiting your orders, as many of us are doing, once you get your official orders, make sure you get onto DPS again and get that move set up. You don't wanna wait on it. You wanna get your move set up, get it in the queue so that way when they start booking shipments, especially if you're moving this uh, summer cycle like many of us are, uh, those shipments will start getting booked around the March, April timeframe. So if you set it up now, just know there'll be a little bit of wait time before you get a moving company assigned, but get it set up as soon as you get your orders. Uh, so that way it's in the line and when they start booking, they can get you assigned to a company. That way you can try to get the dates that you are requesting and you won't have to do any waiting. The closer you wait to the time that you want to leave, the harder it is going to it's going to be to get a moving company and the harder it's going to be to get the dates that you have requested. So just make sure you get all that set up as soon as you get your orders. So we're going to dive into today. I've got my friend here, Paulette. I'm so glad you're able to join us today and you're able to be here um, I always love when I get to talk to Paula. We don't get to see each other in person that much, but I just, it's always a good time. It's always a good conversation. I always learn so much. So I'm very excited today. So welcome, Paulette. Thank you for Thank being you. here. And if you could first just tell us, um, tell the audience about who you are and your family. And um, if you have the count, how many times you've PCS'd as well. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much, Megan, for having me. I agree. I always love the times we get to spend together and in person or virtual. And um, it's a pleasure to be here today. And hopefully I can share a little of our experiences and it can help somebody out. Um, like Megan said, I'm a Coast Guard spouse. My husband has been active duty for 32 years. We have been married for 16 and we are getting ready to move this summer and it will be our eighth move. So we have had a few years where we moved every year. I was just telling Megan in our chat earlier, uh, when our kids were in middle school, we moved cross country four times in five and a half years. And that was, woo, let me tell you. But I'm here to say we, we did it. We survived. We thrived. And our kids are all adulting well now. We were just talking about that. And that's um, reassuring as a parent to know that, you know, they made it through and they learned some great skills through uh, some of those moves and they're doing well now. And also our son who is in the Air Force is doing his very first PCS today. He's literally driving from Lackland Air, um, Air Force Base in Texas to Travis Air Force Base in California um, throughout the week. So anyway, a super exciting kind of as a parent to watch that happening now too. Yeah, I'm excited to hear that. And I was telling Paula earlier, I want to try to get her son on so we can talk about his experience, just what it's like being a military kid and going through when your parents handled everything to now being in charge of your own PCS and what it, that is like setting it up and lessons that maybe he learned as a kid watching, you know, Paula and his dad handle things. And he's just like, I remember my mom doing this and I know I need to do it too. Um, I would love to hear that experience and as she said comforting to know i it's one of those things that keeps me up at night you know thinking like we've moved so many times how are my kids going to handle adult life and so it's just again comforting to hear that you know like how her kids are doing what they're doing and knowing like this is good for them it's not the end of the world um you know our, our kids are resilient little beings and they know how to handle things and so again as a parent it's just um you know, reassuring to hear other people's mm -hmm. experiences with that too. Um, so with all of your PCSs and your moving experience, do you guys use military contracted movers or do you guys do, do a PPM and move yourselves? So we use movers. We always do a partial move ourselves because we always like to keep anything we're going to need 
within three months with us and our, val and our valuables. Um, we always pack up our cars really well. We do have a trailer too um, that we will move with and everything else is through the military movers. Yeah, doing that partial ditty is really um, an important piece too. If you pack anything in your cars, um, or you ha some people have like their own trailer, they pack some stuff in. It's always important to set up a move as a partial ditty so you can weigh your vehicles, weigh that stuff, yes. turn in those weight tickets and and be paid for that as well. I think the partial ditty is definitely a um, a big thing for a lot of folks. And I'll tell you, in, in our first couple of PCSs, like I had no idea about doing a partial ditty. I think we were on like our second PCS and we were just like, at the transportation officer like well if you go weigh your cars you know we can pay you for that and so like we had already unloaded like our cars into our empty house that we just signed a lease to <laughs> so we loaded oh, our cars back up cute. and went and uh, weighed everything so if you're going in your first second pcs you've never heard of a partial ditty like you need to um definitely do it and we can help get you set up with what you need for that um so yeah we need no go ahead i was just gonna say for for multiple reasons but you know a lot of times if you don't know exactly what your situation is that you're going into there's just certain things you want to make sure you have with you uniforms my husband always has a certain pack of uniforms he always takes with him and you know just to prepare for the unexpected yeah definitely um so when you when you know that you're going to be pcsing how do you prepare for it such a loaded question because there's so many different things and you know it is a little bit different for us now that our kids are grown because first thing always used to be see where you're going and figure out what schools are going to be the best fit for your kids mm -hmm. and that always was how we planned everything um, a little different now so we don't have to worry about schools we can just find a place that's gonna work for the size of home we need and the type of area we want to live and what type of commute we want to have um, from wherever we're going to be a little more challenging i think for coast guards um, families because we're oftentimes not at a large base and so we're not moving somewhere where there's maybe an exchange or commissary or different services. So um, it can be a little different figuring out uh, how to navigate that. So yeah, just figuring out what we want life to look like. And depending on the job, if it's going to be a job where we know my husband's going to have leaving at 4.30 in the morning, getting home at 7.38 at night because it's a very high pace job, um, we're probably going to want to live closer in and maybe give up a little bit of square footage if that matters um or if it's going to be a type of tour where we know he's going to have set hours and we can li maybe live a little further out like just just figuring out what's going to work best for our family yeah that planning piece is always important and i know right now you know especially and I, I know at least the army wise since we're an army family there's a huge group of us that are waiting for our official orders to come out within like the next two three week time mm -hmm. frame and so like this limbo living piece knowing we're PCSing, to, but not knowing where to just kind of makes it a little hard, especially for folks like me that are planners. And, yes. you know, knowing like, I can go and clean out my closet, I can go, mm -hmm. you know, clean out my kids toys and stuff. But like, I want to start looking at school districts, yes. I want to start looking at housing. And so like, those things that are important that really kind of dictate what our next, you know, season of life is going to be without mm -hmm. those orders makes it hard to Yes. And we're, we're in that situation right now too. Mm -hmm. We're waiting right now as well, finding out there's a potential we could be staying where we are. Um, but we're, we're waiting within the next few weeks as well. So I've definitely done what I do this time of year when I know a move is probably coming. I've been going through the closets. I've been donating items, you know, all that good stuff. It's just hard not to. And even though we know we can't really do anything yet, I mean, come on, we all start looking on Zillow and start looking on which base possibilities and housing. We all do it, even though we can't really make a decision yet. And definitely that goes I on. Feel so, I feel so attacked because I have done that for <laughs> yeah. our, our, our top choices. Like within the last couple of weeks, like I looked on Zillow and started looking at what houses are available there. What mm -hmm. does, you know, the housing market look like? What mm -hmm. um, does the style of homes, the size of homes? And mm -hmm. so at one of our possible locations, I have a friend there and I text her and I was just like, I am really trying not to feel disappointed in the houses there that are mm -hmm. on, you know, Zillow right now. And she was just like, you're doing it wrong. She was just like, you just need to stop. You don't have your official orders yet. And she mm -hmm. was like, and most houses aren't going to pop on the market until like, 
March, April. Like you need to relax. And I was just like, but, it's but so true. I need, I need to know houses now. <laughs> it, it's so true. And honestly, I think it's almost something to do with your nervous energy while you're waiting to find out that even if it means nothing, it's something you can kind of feel like you're doing something while you're waiting. And it's something to do with that nervous energy. I don't know. It helps me out. Yeah. a bit. And, um, another thing I start doing, um, it's a little different now without the kids at home, but as again, as the coast guard families, we're not usually on a big installation or a big base. So a lot of times we are assigned to, um, private doctors, you know, on the economy for healthcare and that sort of thing. So at that point I would start gathering medical records if I have to take them with me, cause I will definitely hand carry. I don't care how old fashioned it is. I'll get a disc. I'll get, hard copy, whatever, I will take that with me because um, I just want to be prepared for the unexpected again. And we're not always in a military medical system where mm -hmm. records are just easily accessed. So that is definitely something um, for Coast Guard families that I like to do for school records and for medical records is take them in hand with me. I'm just, maybe yeah. that's old fashioned, but it makes me feel, um, at least someone in control of the situation just in case something happens. Yeah, that not it is old fashioned, but still very important to, mm -hmm. to today that you need to have those. And it's much easier getting those records and stuff when you're still there and you can go into the doctor's office to pick them up. You can go into the school and pick them up and you're not playing the phone tag game. Um, your message isn't getting lost in the process. You're not waiting three weeks for your medical records mm -hmm. to arrive in the mail um, yes. or double checking that your current you know, doctor's office did send the request to your last office um, and whatnot. So definitely something very, very important to do and that we mm -hmm. always, it's part of our checklist. So we'll get the link for that dropped into the comments too. Part of our checklist that you get all your records, your medical records, school records, shot records. Um, if mm -hmm. you have pets, you go get your vet records yes. uh, for them too, because that's always um, important, especially if they're on medications or special diets that you take all of that with you. So definitely yeah, we have um, a portable file thing that we, it's mm -hmm. again, one of the things we move in our car <laughs> that we keep with us because we just, you just got to make sure you have access to those important documents. Yeah. No, definitely. And I love when we go and we set up, especially those times, like, so currently we're, we're like, um, similar to Coast Guard, we are seeing all civilian doctors and stuff because we're at a remote assignment. And so it's just, very nice when we came in and we did our first appointments with the doctor, um, you know, and they were asking, you know, well, do you have their immunization records and stuff? And I could just pull it out of my binder like, yes, here is this child and here is this child and here is that child. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have to wait to try to mm -hmm. get all. Of, they still requested it to have the official copy of everything, but they were able to look at our copies of what we had to figure out, you know, if um, a child needed an immunization depending on what grade level they were going into or, mm -hmm. um, you know, asking about a medication when my kids was on, you know, if the dosage was still working, if we had the refills for it, what we needed mm -hmm. to do with that. Um, so having that information when you go into those first appointments definitely helps make that transition Absolutely. much easier as well. Um, so, yeah. So in your experience, like what has really made the difference for your family and having a move go well? What, what we were just talking about is mm -hmm. important to me. And I'll say for me personally, uh, if I can have, have control over that, there's so many things we don't have control mm -hmm. over with our moves that it makes me feel a little more secure, I guess. I don't know. That's just a mental thing, but that's how it works for me. The things I can control, I want to make sure I've got my ducks in a row and that helps me navigate the situation. Um, you know, attitude too. uh, I've always just tried to have a positive attitude about it because again, we, we don't have control over it. And I know with my family or whatever, um, if they're looking at me and um, I'm having a positive attitude about it and I'm um, kind of guiding and leading that way, it's going to be a lot easier for my kids to follow along that way. And for my husband too. And he doesn't, you know, they don't have control either in a lot of ways. So it does him no good to hear me complain or be negative about it because, you know, he may be feeling those feelings too. And it just, mm -hmm. it just helps um, him deal with what he's dealing with if I'm supportive, but I just think attitude is everything. It just can color the whole situation. And I know it's um, with kids that can be such a hard conversation. That one when you're sitting down and telling them that, you know, everything's going to be changing for them again. And, um, and I don't mean being fake. I mean, you know, it, it, 
choosing to have a good attitude about it because this is the life that we have. Yeah, no, absolutely. And attitude definitely is everything. And I know, I mean, especially us with, with kids still at home, you know, that kids can pick up on our emotions and our stress yes. and our anxiety. And so um, it's one of those things, if you worry about something, they're going to catch up on it and they're yes. going to start worrying about it and be like, is this such a big deal? Um, you know, I think back to our last PCS when we moved from Virginia to East Texas that uh, my daughter had a really good friend in Virginia. And so she was really nervous and scared and worried about leaving her good friend there and moving to East Texas and not knowing anyone. It was really her first big PCS where she was saying goodbye to somebody, okay. um, you know, and so it was hard for her. And so being able to talk about how like, well, you're going to make friends in Texas, you know, and not knowing that for sure, if she really was or not, because we've been at some locations where it's been like, my boys had each other to play with and they were each other's friends just because of the environment where we were mm -hmm. at, um, the neighborhood, not having other kids making it hard for other things. And so just trying to be positive and have that positive attitude for her and reassuring her that it's okay. And, and just trying to carry that through the whole move, um, you know, it definitely makes a big yeah. difference, especially for our children. Thankfully yes. we've got, she's got three good friends, like, you know, houses across the street and next door. Um, and I try so to make it exciting too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you don't have to take any baggage with you that you don't want to. You can be yeah. whoever you want to be. You yeah. can, you know, if you want to be courageous in some trying something new or whatever, you don't have to be held back by any previous, mm -hmm. you know, situations. You can, um, you know, the world is your oyster. And, you know, at one point, one of my kids, his name is Jacob. And, you know, he decided he was going to be Jake. And that was his exciting thing about that move is, I can be Jake and I can be that at school and that can be my name. I said, Absolutely. You can be Jake now. They can know you as Jake. And so it gave them kind of a sense of ownership and control of the situation as well. And um, that really helped my kids. I know. Yeah. I love, I love hearing that story um, with your son, how he was just like, this is who I am now. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for us getting ready to, to move as well, my, my son will be starting, our oldest will be starting high school. He'll be a freshman mm -hmm. um, next school year. And so like, I, I have even asked him that I'm like, you know, you can go in as like the cool kid or you can be like the whatever kid. And he just looks at me like, I'm crazy. I'm just like, nobody knows you there. No. You know, I'm like, you can, you know, go in as whatever. I'm like, they'll, they'll be, more military kids there because we're going back towards um, a bigger installation. I was like, you know, but like you can be whoever and um, whatnot. I'm like, you know, he struggled one of his years here where we're at now in school. And I'm just like, those teachers there aren't going to know that. They're not going to know who Grant was in sixth grade. Like, you know, yeah. they're going to know Grant as the new ninth grader. Um, yeah. You know, I'm like, so you Embrace can it. start over and be new and it's a fresh slate and you know, you can be who you want to be. So yeah, I, I definitely, and I love hearing that story of your son. That's just so sweet to hear about how he's just, I'm Jake now. Yeah. Um, you know, I love it. Um, so has your family ever had like a negative experience PCSing? And if you did, like, how did you navigate through that, that negative experience? You know, you know, we haven't had any huge negative mm -hmm. experiences. Um, I'm thinking about all aspects of it. Like, we, we had one move where I had some jewelry stolen and I didn't realize it till much later because it wasn't stuff that I used all the time. And so we were not able to claim it. And that was, that was really hard, but it was a lesson for me. Mm -hmm. I pack all my jewelry and take it with me now. I just, it's just one of those things. It was, I think it was my second PCS and I had a couple nice pieces of jewelry that my husband had purchased for an anniversary or something. And, and um, I didn't even think about it. I just, they packed everything, you know, and um, it wasn't until the holidays I realized it was gone when I went to look at it for a special occasion. Yeah. And um, so that was kind of a hard lesson, but, you know, it was a learning experience. Now I definitely take all valuables and jewelry with me in my car. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was a learning experience. Um, another experience was one time when my kids were in middle school when we moved and um it didn't end up being the situation that we thought it was going to be school wise. And um, just, it didn't end up being what it looked like when we moved cross country to a place we'd never been. Mm -hmm. How many people have done that before? Right. It was a really difficult year. It ended up being a one year tour. Um, and it was a really growing experience for my kids. I wanted to, 
Um, the school wasn't a great fit. I wanted to just pull them out and put them in private school or do, you know, mm -hmm. uh, something different. And we kind of just gutted it out and it ended up being one of the best learning experiences for them um, that benefited them as young adults a lot. I can see that now where they learned a lot. They grew a lot. It was very hard going through. I would have never chosen it. But looking back, I can see the lessons learned from it and how it's made them who they are today. So um, I, I just think we can take all negatives and turn them into a positive some way. Yeah. And it goes back to the attitude thing. I mean, yes, there are things negative that happen that we can't control. But in our situations, um, we could use it all as a learning experience. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, I love how you... you, you you talk about two different negative experiences tied to PCSing, but not the same thing. I think when we think mm -hmm. negative experiences, we always talk about like our table showing up broken type mm -hmm. of deal. Um, but I love how you talk about, you know, the whole school situation too, because those are things that we sometimes don't think about as negative experiences when we go through a PCS. Um, and as you said, we can learn a lot through those negative experiences and it can help us prepare better um, or plan better for the next PCSs and the lessons that we can learn from it and hearing how you're, your children grew through that year and um, how it impacted them later on. Um, but, you know, I, th I think definitely the lessons that we can learn through some of these experiences that we have and being able to utilize them and then pass mm -hmm. them on to others um, is definitely a big thing. And yes, always carry your jewelry with you. Um, that's one of the biggest things. Jewelry oh and challenge coins are two of the biggest things I hear that people are just like, um, that go missing. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, like, like you, your experience, you know, an accident, you didn't pack it all. You didn't think you needed to. Um, and then something happened, um, type of thing. So definitely. Nice. It's, yeah. Um, I always say if you're able to pack, if it means something to you, if it's important, if it's valuable, if you're able to mm -hmm. pack it in your suitcase to take on the plane or pack it in your luggage to put in the car, like always do that. We have a list of things, um, that, bad to say kind of rank of what we care about in our home mm -hmm. uh, and we go through that we have we have tough boxes that go into our vehicles mm -hmm. when we pcs and mm -hmm. we start filling it and everything we can fit in it gets put into it and if we get to the point where we run out of room because then we run out of room in our car it's you know okay we have to either fit, you know decide if we want to mail it to ourselves mm -hmm. at our next location or do we trust it with the packers and let it go some of the things we can trust with them we'll put it on the high value it'll you know go mm -hmm. through and arrive that way, so we know it's specifically listed. Um, but yeah, if you're able to, to pack yeah. it and take it with you, I always suggest that you do. Well, and if it's something that's irreplaceable, if mm -hmm. there's something that means a lot to you, you have an emotional attachment to it, yeah. and it's irreplaceable, then just bring it with you if you can. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so one of my favorite questions I love asking everybody, because everybody has different answers for various different reasons. And mm -hmm. I think it's important because, especially going into order season, how everyone, everyone's gonna be like, Who's been here? What do I need to know? Who, you know, we got someplace we weren't expecting or wasn't on our list or we didn't think we'd go to or surprise orders to a new location. What has been your favorite and your least favorite duty stations? This is such a loaded question because, again, I think it can go back to attitude. And I mm -hmm. have a hard time saying anything was my le least favorite because I think there's something good about every place we go. You can find something good about it. Mm -hmm. um, but my favorite was probably um, Hampton Roads, Virginia, Virginia Beach, Portsmouth, that area, Chesapeake Bay area. Um, I liked the weather. There were so many military families there. Being a Coast Guard family and being in remote locations, I think it was the first place we went where it was literally a strong presence of every branch of the military. And I just learned so much. And I had such a network of support, whether we were at church or the gym or whatever. I mean, like our church actually had a military Bible study group. It was a Bible study group of everyone that was military families there. And I had never experienced anything like that before. So I think it was um, a combination of just, we liked the area. We liked the history. We liked the things we could do. We liked being by a warm beach, but we also had all these great networks built in the community that we had never had before. So that was really cool. And interesting enough, that's the place where we had the hardest situation with the school that I told you about. <laughs> back now, I mean, it, it, there's something good to be had about it. I mean, I don't know. It's just funny how 
how you look back at these situations, but I do think very fondly about that location. Um, my least favorite was probably being in Alaska and I don't dislike it. It was just where we were in Juneau was very isolated. It was like you could only boat or fly in. You can't drive to Juneau, which other parts of Alaska you can drive to. You cannot drive there. So you're very isolated. And so it feels very different. Um, it's hard. If you have to go anywhere in the U.S. other than right on like Seattle or something, it takes two days to get there. You can't go directly from Juneau there. So it was just kind of a crazy time, I guess, with feeling a little bit isolated. But yet again, it was a great small town. There was no traffic. My kids got to do Boy Scouts and literally walk outside their schoolyard and do these, you know, amazing nature hikes and see all this crazy, uh, you know, bear scat right out. They had bears on their playground a few times when they were in school there too, or go skiing for PE or whatever, you know. So there's always good to be had about all of them, but I guess I guess it comes down to temperature for me. I'd rather be warm than cold. But I, I, I enjoyed every experience and yeah. I look forward to more. I really do. Yeah. yeah. And I think when we talk about favorite and least favorite, it's always important to keep in mind somebody's season of life um, when they say, oh, I hated that location or, oh, I loved it. Uh, because it's different for everybody. Why somebody might have hated one place, somebody else mm -hmm. might have absolutely loved it. And so like for us, uh, we were at Williamsburg. We talked about this before. Uh, you know, we were stationed at Williamsburg. So just down the road from Portsmouth and Norfolk. And, yeah, we used uh, to Williamsburg Rose, Williamsburg. and and we loved the area. We absolutely loved it. I loved living 10 mm -hmm. minutes away from Colonial Williamsburg and being able to go grab coffee and then just walk it on a Saturday morning mm -hmm. with the kids. Uh, you know, but my husband's job was really hard. Um, it was very high op tempo. He had really long hours and a deployment in there. And so for that aspect of it, like we hated it because he didn't yeah. get to enjoy it as much as me and the kids, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then on the flip side, the place I that I didn't really like was Fort Riley. Um, it was our first duty mm -hmm. station. We were newlyweds. It's in the middle of the country. Um, we weren't big into fishing at the time. We weren't big into the college bar scene at the time. And so those are like the two ends of the spectrum that you have there. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, it was just kind of a hard location because of that. But I've got friends now that absolutely love Fort Riley. Like they want to go back to Fort Riley. Yeah. Like that's some of their favorite um, friends from there. And so I think Again, when we talk about somebody's favorite and least favorite, and when you ask mm -hmm. in the groups who's been here and you get somebody that says, I hate it or I loved it, why? And what was their season of life at the time? Because everyone's sure. going to be different. And I love the saying that you hear sometimes is your favorite duty station is always the one that you just left. Just left, yeah. Um, because yeah. you might have struggled with it while you were there, but now looking, being at a new location and mm -hmm. looking back, it's like, it really wasn't so bad. Um, yeah. And, and I, I would never say I hated any of them. I think mm -hmm. hate is a really strong word, not saying that someone might not feel that way, but I definitely have not. I think there's something good to find in all of them. And I also think, you know, take it as a challenge to find joy wherever you are, you know, you can, you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. So that kind of leads into my next question that I had mm -hmm. for you. So when you arrive at a duty location, mm -hmm. How do you get involved with your community? How do you find your friends? How do you get integrated where you feel like you belong here and you're a part of it? So I'm super big on this. I love connecting and supporting military spouses. It's definitely a passion of mine. And mine starts well before I get someplace. Mm -hmm. And this has been since before Facebook existed. Um, I will figure out where we're going and find out what military spouse groups are there. I'm a really strong supporter of military spouse groups. I know some people will kind of dog on them or say, Oh, everybody's this way. Everybody. I still think you, you can create your environment wherever you are and um, you can make something good out of it, but there's going to be community there of people that understand your life. And I think um, military spouse groups are amazing. And uh, so I definitely will reach out and find out, what I, whatever I can find out about that before I get there. Um, we'll start looking at churches. We do attend church. So I will start looking around and see what church looks like. It might be a good fit. Maybe send a few emails, ask a few questions um, on that. If 
obviously when my kids were growing up, schools was a big thing, figure out um, where they were going to school. And I'm one of those that volunteered for everything. I volunteered for mm-hmm. PTA. I volunteered as, you know, to be a team mom for my kids' sports. That's another thing. If you've got a kid that's, you know, really into baseball or whatever, you're going to start checking out teams and trying to figure out situations for them to be able to get plugged in as well. But for me, it happens before you get there. So when you do get there, you can hit the ground running and Mm -hmm. it may come from being short toured a lot of times, like we have been that I don't want to waste time. I want to be where I am fully while I'm there. Mm -hmm. And if you can do a little bit of work ahead of time so that you can plug right in Um, you're, you're going to get to experience and live and embrace and have ownership with the community where you are for the time you're there. And I just, for me, that's important because I need to feel, I I just need to feel that ownership with where I am to feel a part of things. And that's what makes me feel okay where I am, if I have a place. And, um, so I think that's huge. And uh, I'm also a mentor with MOPS, so I'll try to find a military MOPS group. Luckily, I've been able to find one everywhere I've been with that because I I like to volunteer. I do a lot of volunteering, and I think that's a great way to plug in, get to know people, and um, feel a part of your community. And again, back to the school thing, if you are able to volunteer with PTA or with your kid's school, it's going to give you a heartbeat of what's going on there when you don't have the luxury of having lived there for 10 years to know what this school's like, which ones are good teachers, mm-hmm. what's going to be a good fit. Um, volunteering, I think, is key to kind of get in there and get to um, really be able to tell what's happening and feel a part of things so that you can make a good decision for your kids, too. And there was something else that popped up when we were talking that I want to make sure I'm not forgetting. Um Ah, just went in, <laughs> escaped me. I'll think of it in a minute. But you gave a lot of good, good, good advice about how you can get plugged into your community and know them. And so going back to the spouse, spouse groups and everything, mm-hmm. that's one of the big ones that um, you do hear some locations that they're horrible and other locations that they're great. Uh, but one thing I want to, with that, I want to tell everybody is go try it once. Um, yes. You know, always just, again, it's taking that word of mouth thing. You know, somebody hated the location, somebody loved it. Somebody hates a spouse group, somebody loves it. Go try it once. It could end up being the greatest thing for you, or it could end up being like, you know, this isn't what I need at this location right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the same thing when you meet people and they say, hey, let's grab coffee sometime or let's go mm-hmm. grab lunch and everything say yes and go try it, go have the lunch, go have the cup of coffee. When we were stationed at Williamsburg, I met so many of my friends by saying like, sure, I'll meet you for coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and just the conversations that we had and finding out how much we had in common and like seeing our kids play and everything. It just was very comforting to know that there were other people in our same situation. Cause everybody at one point or a time has been the new person at their location. Yes. So everybody knows what it's like you know, coming in, not knowing anybody, trying to figure out what you need to know. And so um, I'm that person who calls everyone and says, (laughs) let's do coffee. Let's have lunch. And that is kind of the thing I was going to say that slipped my mind was be willing to thrive in the uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Messaging someone you don't know at a new place and going, hey, I've never met you. Let's meet for coffee because you've made some connection with them in some way. Um, Do it. Yes. Take that step, thrive in the uncomfortable because it, you, you just never know, like you said, ended up being some of your best friends. Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss out on those opportunities and those relationships because I'm in this window of time in this place. So I'm willing to take that step and do that. Um, And I think it's really important. And you just never know what that could mean to somebody else. I mean, for me, I'm able to do that. I'm not shy at all. So I'm willing to take that step out, but I, I want to do that because I can, I feel it's a way of giving back in a way for me, but there may be people that aren't able to do that, but by you reaching out can make a real difference in their life. And you just never know what relationship you might miss out on if you don't do that. So I'm just, I'm really, and I, and yes, try the spouse club because we all move every few years, every couple Mm -hmm. years, it's completely different group. So just don't be quick to judge that because you just, you just never know. And also you can be the one to make it better. Mm-hmm. 
you know? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. So I want to share this um, up here on the screen from Angela. Um, thanks for watching, Hi, Angela. Angela. He says, yes, it is easy, but I've never regretted. It isn't easy, but I've never regretted putting myself out there and trying to connect with people in my community. Yes. Um, it can be a scary thing, especially for um, some of us who feel more introverted than extroverted, like trying to ask somebody to go on a coffee date or whatever it may be. Um, but I mean, the worst thing they can say is, you know, like, oh, no, or not today, or I'm really busy or whatever. And it's just like, OK, and you move on. Um, you know, it, it can definitely be a very scary thing, um, you know, to try to to put yourself out there and to meet friends. Um, but, you know, that's one of the, also the big things that I love about our, our spouse network and our spouse community as well, is I always feel like I know somebody somewhere yes. or I know somebody who knows somebody. And so when I see, you know, a friend is just like, we're going to Fort whatever, and they've never been there. And just like, do I know anybody there? And I can be like, oh. I have a friend that's stationed at Fort Carson. Let me connect you. And then, mm -hmm. you know, a week later, um, after they arrive, like you see pictures of them, like having lunch together and being at each other's kids' birthday parties and things. And you just sit there, you're just like, I did that. Like I that love was all it. because of me. Um, and so it's one of those things, like you, you don't have to go someplace, you know, being a stranger. If you ask, if you reach out, more than likely, you know somebody that knows somebody there or they know somebody that knows somebody there. And I love being able to like connect people together and be like, hey, I've got a friend let me connect you to and you can put it I think I think that's my hobby that's yeah. my hobby I love connecting people no I I do um you know and there was a time in my life when I I wasn't able to do all of that when with mm -hmm. four kids growing up and super busy but but now it is and yeah. so I love so what what Paula is saying is that if you need a friend she will be your professional friend finder <laughs> I will have coffee with you virtually if you need a friend no I, I mean it. That's what makes a difference for me being somewhere. And so I think that's why it's so important for me to do it to others. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's like me, like you said, you know, but some people are introverted, but still want to have coffee with someone. So yeah. reach out, you know, and I definitely do that before I get to a place. So when I get there, I've already got a plan and can get things going because the sooner I feel like I have some connections where I am, that's when I feel at home and mm -hmm. I feel you know, everything else can kind of move forward for me. And that's just, that's just yeah. me, but yeah. Yeah. And Stacy, I see your comment here um, in the comments about living remotely. So we're a similar situation. We're in a remote assignment, so you don't have that military area community, but her advice is to check out the Chamber of Commerce events yes. um, and activities as well to find out what is happening in your town. She mentions the Rotary Club. Um, yeah. You know, every, every city usually has like a, travel board or like leisure and travel um you know department of something where they post like what's happening going on events picnics um parades like lots of other stuff um so it's always a yeah, great chamber thing. of commerce is great yeah. i i connect with them i do some activities with them i'm actually a military i don't know what they call it military advisor i'm not an advisor but i am kind of a, a military representative at the chamber of commerce for this area and that's really cool too yeah um great way to get to know local people and we're also a part of our local vfw um i'm in the auxiliary my husband is uh, a member and um that's been amazing as well you know whether it's you know american legion or vfw something like that it's it's a great um, it's a great way to even help out local veterans and different mm -hmm. things like that. And just be connected to the community that way people can yeah. be retired where you are, even if you're in a remote place. But, yeah, and I, I found something out this week, um, about that has to do with PCSing. Yeah. And I, I let my son know is that one of the things we do with our VFW auxiliary is if there's military coming through, that's PCSing and their car breaks down around here or whatever, Go to the local VFW. They'll help veterans and military members. If you have like car trouble and need mm -hmm. some help or need a reference for someone to work on, or maybe even need some assistance. Um, we do that for people here. So that's another little gem of a resource too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks for sharing. Cause that's definitely something I never would have thought of, of like, you know, what are the local military organizations we can try to reach out while we're, you know, stuck trying to get a car fixed or. Yeah. We did uh, that just this, maybe. this over Christmas, a military family was transferring, had a car breakdown and needed a little financial assistance and we helped them. 
So yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. So again, our our military and our spouse network and our communities. And I had it up on the screen a minute ago. I'm gonna show it again, Stacy, who just shows up to random coffee meetups. And Perfect. someday someday I help me and you, Stacy, get stationed together so that way we can go have coffee together. I um, would love that too. Throw me in there for a trio. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe we can all meet. I think between where where Stacy's located at, if I remember correctly, where you're at Paulette and where I might be moving to, you might be like the midpoint. We can all just go visit Paulette and just have some coffee together. This is um, your invitation. Come yeah. on over. Yes. We're all meeting at Paulette's house in June. I'll make the coffee if I'm Pending still here. Orders. Yes. <laughs> I don't even know. We're in such a, yeah, we don't know right now. Yeah. And Stacy wants us all to come to South Carolina. So maybe- I would be Super happy to do that. I love South Carolina. Charleston area. Love it. Yes. Um, we're going to, uh, and Stacy, not going to lie. It's awkward sometimes. Stacy, you know, I like awkward though. Some of the best things come from being those awkward situations and being the awkward person, especially like when you're at, you know, you're meeting somebody for the first time or you're at a, an event or, you know, a luncheon for the first time and it feels awkward some of the best experiences and things come from that awkwardness. And I'm not afraid to be the awkward person. Like if we just need to ask a question or jump in or find out, like, you know, I'm your girl for that. Like, let's do it. Um, awkwardness can be good. Um, I know, totally don't... agree. I totally agree. Just take that step, you know, thriving in the uncomfortable, just take that step. It is awkward, but the rewards for it are awesome. I mean, I've never regretted it. Yes, no, absolutely. So we're, I'm going to get to our last question because I'm pretty sure we have answered it at, through okay. our conversation mm -hmm. is what advice you would pass on to other spouses, whether it's something PCS related or something just military spouse life in general. Wow. So I do feel like I've kind of touched on most of them, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's about having a positive attitude and, you know, thriving in the uncomfortable and being willing to embrace that. Because if you can do that, I'm not saying it's easy. It's not. A lot of times it's really not easy, but if you're able to do that a bit, um, you're, you're going to have the opportunity to take advantage of the blessings that are going to come out of it too. Because if you from the get go are feeling negative and like Megan said earlier, passing that feeling onto your family or your spouse, um, there's not, there's not something positive that's going to come out of that. Mm -hmm. So just having a positive attitude and, um, tackling it in that sense, I just think makes such a huge difference. And for me, honestly, it's once I know where I'm going, it's doing that legwork and investigating so I can find out the places I want to connect so I know before I get there. And that's pretty yeah. much, I've always been like, even before it was easy with, like I said, social media or anything, um, making some connections so that when you get there, you have some of those bridges already started to be built, mm -hmm. um, that you can take advantage of so that when you do get a little bit overwhelmed, as we all do in a new place, sometimes you're already going to have a little bit of network that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's definitely some some great, great advice there. Uh, definitely try to thrive where you're at and get out there and meet people. Uh, Be organized as much as you can. Yeah. I, know, I didn't even really talk about a lot of the, all the packing tips and things like that. We didn't really go that direction, but that's this is this is one tip I'll say. If you know where you're going mm -hmm. and you're pre-packing, because I I always pre-pack. I have a million plastic bins. They're clear. They can see through. So most of the time the movers don't mess with them too much because they can see. But um, I label them. You can actually get packing tape that has room names on it now. Mm -hmm. But I label them according to where where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you may be in one house that has five bedrooms, moving to a house that has three bedrooms and one that has a den and one doesn't. If you can label it for where it's going, it'll be way easier on the other side than labeling it for where it's being packed up. If that makes sense. That's mm -hmm. just my little thing yeah. that helps me a lot, but 
Yeah, definitely. And I'm a big fan of like those room labels or the tape that has the room uh, written yes. on it. It just it makes for delivery um, to be much, much easier because then mm -hmm. you're spending less time directing traffic. Like get a piece of paper and put that same room label on it and tape it to the door. Yeah. We and then people can go match the blue sticker to the door with the blue sticker. Um, yes. So, you know, the pink sticker to the door with the pink sticker because then you can focus on looking for damage. You can focus on checking yeah. off inventory. I and think last time what I did, because I had disposable paper plates, I wrote it on the plates and taped it above each door jam, of, yeah. you know, so it would be easier. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, definitely. It just, it makes directing traffic on delivery yeah. day. And we do something so crazy. Easier. I know this is, I hope I'm not going off too much on a tangent, but we do something crazy that most people don't do. And we have them unpack every box before they leave that day. And they take all boxes and wrapping with them so that we don't have to deal with getting someone to come back for it. Mm -hmm. And we know what's broken right then. And it is hell. I will tell you, it is a horrible day. It's a horrible two days because there's stuff everywhere, but we kind of have a system down now. Um, but we literally have every box unpacked the day it's delivered. Yeah. A full unpack. So you are, Allow for those watching that don't know, you can request a full unpack. You could request a partial unpack, mm -hmm. um, but you need to request it up front in advance yes. because they have to be able to staff your move properly for it. Uh, but you can have them unpack your home and just know that in the regulations, a lot of people say don't do it because they're just going to cut the box open and dump their dump stuff out. And we've had experiences like that. But in the regulations, it says that they should open the box, unpack the item and place it on the nearest flat surface, which could be a table, a counter, a cabinet, a shelf. Um, you know, but just know once Ooh. that flat space is uh, filled with stuff that the unpacking generally stops. So you have to be active. In yeah. Um, and this is what we actually do. We do request it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows this ahead of time. We, most of the time they will set like beds up and things like that first, because mm -hmm. then they'll put it on, because it does have to be on something. They can't just dump it on the floor or whatever. Yeah. So we'll have all the beds will be set up first. So they have that to put them on. I don't know. That's getting off on a tangent. I don't need to, but that's definitely something that we do that's very hard on move day but our stuff's literally put away within 48 hours it's all done yeah i would say for our experience so we always do a partial unpack mm -hmm. um so like our high value items that you need to open and inspect on delivery day anyway like yeah. we have those unpacked um my kitchen gets unpacked our wardrobe boxes get unpacked and then i have various other boxes that will get unpacked you we do a lot of pre-packing um, we're going to have an episode that talks about all of our tips and tricks and hacks of pre-packing. So if it's a box that has anything pre-packed in it, we usually request that be opened as well because those boxes usually contain like, so we put our clothes into flex totes and mm -hmm. those can get stacked in a box. So like, mm -hmm. you know, they can open the box, put those flex totes on the floor in front of the dresser mm -hmm. and take the, that box yeah. and piece of paper with them yeah. um, kind of deal. And so it's just mm -hmm. for us, you know, we like doing it ourselves, but there are certain things we want unpacked because it gets boxes out. We have a small library um, because our family is big readers and my husband is a big reader. Um, so we have a small library. So we usually have those book boxes get unpacked because they can easily just unpack them and put them on the shelf. And then at a later time, me and my husband will go in and rearrange them to how we want them to be. Um, but it's always nice that we get, you know, those 30 boxes of books get unpacked and those 30 boxes get 30 packed. boxes of books. Oh my well, God. You know, we use the small boxes, the small, okay. the small cartons uh, for books because you don't want the boxes to get too heavy. Otherwise they can't carry them. Yes. Um, so it's always the small boxes, but we have between my husband's books and my books and our kids books, we have a small library. Um, wow. And I think we can request a partial unpack, but again, uh, partial or full, whichever one you want, you do need to request it ahead of time. Um, yeah. And yeah. usual report date is July 1st. My birthday is June 30th. I cannot tell you how many days I have unpacked boxes on my birthday all day, yeah. all night. Yes. And my biggest thing is you need to make sure you unpack every box. Um, you at least need to open it. You need to look at the contents. You need to see, uh, what all is happening there um, and whatnot, because there's nothing worse than like 
you have a box and you just shove it in the closet because you're tired and you're done. And this random box moves to your next seven different mm -hmm. homes and never gets unpacked. And then you finally unpack it and you look at it and it's just like paper that could be shredded because you don't need it. Or it's like, no. you know, it was a box of your kids clothes that got mislabeled and now it doesn't fit them. And like that's 10, 15 pounds you could be saving on your weight limits, um, yep. but always open and look at each box. So um, I have this was really, really fun. enjoyed having you on today, Paula. We're going to have to do this again sometime, maybe Absolutely. after your PCS or what, maybe while you're going through your PCS, you can. Sure. And, you know, we moved in the spring of 2020. We were the first wave getting packed in May of 2022. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see how this compares because that was really crazy. Yeah. And I'd love to get my son on here too. Yes, no, absolutely. We're, we are going to get your son on here to talk about his experience from being a military kid and PCSing and letting mom and dad handle it to now being a military. I wanted to handle member. this one so bad for him. My husband kept saying, stop it. He's an adult. Let him do it himself. But, but, but. It's hard. It's hard as a parent when we know we can do something to help them. That's just like, they got to do it too. So, He's you know, doing we're, great though. Yeah. He's doing so we're going to get him on. We're going to have you back to talk about your PCS and compare it to your pandemic PCS that sure. I've enjoyed today. I'm so glad you got to me be too. here with us. So thank yes. you. Thanks and for everybody, having me. Absolutely. And everybody watching, join us next week. We're going to have a uh, professional organizer on who's going to talk mm -hmm. about decluttering our home before our PCS. Um, and then also about tips for setting up your new home and maybe some tips and tricks on how to organize some of the most uh, common spaces that are hard to organize. I struggle with our pantry. I feel like I'm reorganizing our pantry every two weeks because it, it it's not functional in our current house. Um, but we're going to have, we're going to have Caroline talk about some of those. those I can't wait to things. see that. I'll be tuning yeah. in. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be good. So join us next week, but until then y'all take care and have a great rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>